Hi everyone, Jeff here again for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to update the firmware on a VIP Vision network video recorder. Now, updating firmware on a recorder was traditionally something that you didn't do unless you absolutely had to do. So let's say there was a feature or something that you were missing, or maybe you were experiencing some unreliability. These days though, it's, it's usually a good thing to do just to keep security updates to the machine, particularly if it's connected to the internet. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. The first way, um, which a lot of new recorders actually have is automatic update. So the recorder itself can update itself from the internet either automatically or through a schedule or manually triggered through, through well it's an automatic update manually triggered. Um, however, often there's a number of situations where you're going to want to update firmware manually. Now the two ways to update firmware manually are either by the network interface on the recorder, okay, so using uh, the Smart PSS Remote View application, for instance, it has an option to do it. You could be using the config tool or the configuration tool for these recorders. Alternatively, you could also use the web interface. Uh, these are all ways of doing it via the network interface. However, one way that's a little more simple than that and is used a little more often is actually updating via a USB stick. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now, it's worth noting that everything that I show you here, I'm going to be doing on a four channel, VRP Vision four channel network video recorder. However, everything I do is also applicable to the entire range, the entire range that's currently on sale. So that includes everything from the four channel all the way up to the 256 channel recorders. They're done the same way. It's also worth noting these steps apply not only to the VIP Vision recorders, but also to the WatchGuard series uh, network video recorders and to the SecureView series HDCVI CVR recorders. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually check the firmware version that's on our recorder. So I'm going to switch across to a recorder now. This is our four channel recorder. As you can see here, I've got the mouse moving. Now the first thing I need to do is log into the recorder. So I'm going to right click, select main menu. It's going to be prompt me for my login details on this particular recorder. It's just six eights and six eights for the username and password. And I'll go OK. Now to check the firmware version of this recorder, I select system. Sorry, system from the info menu. Make sure you don't select system from the setting menu down the bottom here. You must select it from the info section. So system and then version. Okay, so select version. And from here, it's going to actually tell you the version of firmware on the recorder. Now, don't worry too much about the thing up here that actually says system version. What we're actually interested in is the build date. Okay, so in this case, the build date is 11.10.2016. And uh, just by the fact that it's a 2016 firmware version, I think that it's, it's probably a good chance that we're going to have an update available for it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click, just exit, right click once more to exit, and we're back to um, the start screen or the, the main camera of our recorder that we're currently viewing. So the next step that we need to do is obviously we're going to need to get the firmware from somewhere. So I suggest you download it from the VIP Vision website. So I'm just going to jump across to a PC now and I'll just show you what to do. So open your web browser of choice. In this case, I'm going to use Chrome. Going to wait for it to load up here. There we go. And we want to go to the VIP Vision website, vip-vision.com. Select the support category and downloads. Now from here, you'll notice that you'll have all of the recorders the VIP Vision currently have and any of the obsolete products will be in here as well. So the quickest way to do it is just to select Control F and search for the recorder I'm looking for. As I said before, I'm actually on a four channel recorder, which is an MVR4 Pro 3. It's very important that you get this model number correct. If you know that it's an MVR4 Pro, but not necessarily that it's a Pro 3, please do not download firmware that is not for your recorder. It will end badly. So I'm going to need to download the firmware here. So we can see NVR firmware type D 10.11.2017. So it's nearly a year younger than the firmware that we've got on the recorder. So we're going to download that. Okay, now depending on the speed of your network connection, this might take a while to download or it might be quite fast. In this case, we're on a fast connection, so it's quite quick, but don't expect, don't be too concerned if this takes a while to do. So it's just being scanned now for viruses. Okay, now that's done. So the next thing that we need to actually do is open that download. So I'm going to open the downloads within Chrome, which was Control J. And there you go. There's the firmware that I downloaded. Now this is actually zipped, this firmware. Okay, so the firmware zipped. We're going to actually have to unzip it before you can load it onto the recorder. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Unzip it and copy it to the USB stick. 
So here, as I mentioned, we've got these two files. The first thing you should probably actually do is read the readme file. It's always a good idea, just to ensure that you've got the right firmware and there's nothing that you need to take note of. As you'll note up here, caution, flashing firmware not designed for your device can cause damage to your device. Please ensure the model of your device is listed below. Disclaimer, make sure that the recorder that you're copying this to is in this list. If you do not, if, you, if it is not the correct firmware for the recorder, please do not attempt an update. It will not go well. So, under here we've got notes. Okay, so this is a major update. Fixes over decode error on playback. There you go, there's an error that's been fixed in the firmware. Um, and also fixes config error 18. And it just gives us some additional notes about what's actually going to happen to this recorder once we do the update. But that's great. Okay, so we know that our recorder's in the list here, NVR4 Pro 3. I'm going to close that. Now, here's the file that I actually need to copy to the USB stick. Okay, so MVR firmware type D, you'll have the firmware version in here and the build date on the end. So I'm going to minimize my Chrome window in the background here and I'm going to open up my USB stick. Here we go. Now, whilst it's not 100% necessary to have nothing on this USB stick, it is a good idea to use a USB stick which has nothing else on it during the firmware update because it'll just make life a bit easier while you're selecting the file. So I'm going to drag this in here and there you go, now it's copied to my USB stick. So the next, next step in this process is actually to plug this USB stick into our recorder. So any spare USB stick, USB port on the recorder will be fine. Obviously note that if you've got a mouse plugged in, you're going to need to you know, keep that plugged in. Don't unplug your mouse while you're plugging in the USB stick. So I'm going to jump across to the recorder now. I'll just switch across to it. There we go, we're back here. Now, I'm just inserting the USB stick into the recorder. And there we go, we're actually prompted. We're asked what we would like to do with this USB stick. Now, file backup we could do, a log backup, config backup, or a system upgrade. Now, in this case, we're going to be doing a system upgrade, as we will always be doing when we're updating firmware. So I'm going to click that one there. Please insert the USB device and click the upgrade button to begin. So, upgrade. I select the firmware file that I just copied to the disk. Make sure that it's the right size before you do this. Uh, the recorder will catch most of the time if, if the firmware is wrong for the recorder or if it's corrupt, but it's a good idea just to double check that the size is right before doing it. And click start. Now, this system is updating at the moment. It's going to take a little while. It depends on the, on the size of the firmware update. It depends on, on you know, obviously the recorder that you're doing on. In this case, it was a 50 megabyte update, so it's quite large. It will take the recorder, you know, up to a minute, possibly a couple of minutes before this is completed. There we go. So we're, we're about halfway through now. We'll just let that complete. Okay. So that's completed and now the recorder is actually restarting. So we'll wait for that recorder to restart, uh, but everything's gone well, it's, it's updated. Now, um, shortly we'll see that it'll fire back up and you'll be able to check the firmware version again. So we'll just wait for that to happen. Um, as I said before, it doesn't necessarily matter whether you've got anything on the USB stick that you're doing it from, but it just makes it easier if you've only got that firmware file on there because you saw how easy it was, I just selected the only file I had on the, on the USB stick. If you've got multiple files on there, you may select the wrong one. Um, most of the time the recorder will correct that and stop you from actually messing up the firmware on the recorder, but under certain circumstances with certain files, it may cause damage to the recorder, so just be aware of that. Now it's still rebooting that recorder there, but it shouldn't take too much longer. We'll just wait for that to come up. And I'll switch back across now. Okay, so now the recorder's rebooted and you can see that we're being prompted to log in. Note that we no longer have the 6 eighths username and password on here. That was actually removed in a security update, so you must log in using the admin username and password or any other account that you've got on the machine that is not 6 eighths. Now, if you've forgotten the admin password for the recorder, you can actually use this little forgot password button down here and it will go through the steps to use either your recovery questions or an email address that's already set on the recorder. If you haven't set an email address on the recorder, it will prompt you to set one, but there is another video showing how to do that, so I'll leave that for now. Now I just need to log in with my 
username and password. In this case, my admin password is a nice and secure admin123. Sorry, bear with me while we... It's a little bit difficult just to, uh, due to our video setup here. Okay, admin123. And I select OK. Now we've logged in. Because this unit has now got some additional features on it than it did before, previously this version of firmware has things like I mentioned before, the auto updates, automatic updates, and the smart add function up here. Now I'm gonna leave everything how it was before. I'll just leave auto updates checked. Now it's gonna run me through the, the initial startup wizard again. If you haven't already completed it, I'm just gonna select next and next and next and leave everything the same way that it was before and finish and select yes now you'll note that it's it's also popped up with that same usb menu again before we don't need to do anything with this now we can just right click to close it and i'm going to right click once more and i'm going to select main menu now from main menu i'm going to select under info i'm going to select system again and as i did previously i'm going to select version and there you go we've updated to the later version of firmware So now that update process is complete, the recorder has the new version of firmware on it. Um, everything's working on the recorder. As we can see, we've got our, had our camera up there that we had there before. Um, and you're done. All you have to do is just make sure that you remove that USB stick so that you don't get that prompt every time you restart the recorder. And yeah, that should be it complete. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope that you've, you've learned something from it, or at least it makes your life a little bit easier with regard to installation of these recorders. If you have any further questions regarding this product or any of the other products or any other questions at all, please leave your, your, any, any questions you have in the comments below. Um, any feedback that you have, I'd be glad to hear it. Please leave it below. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you, you feel like these videos have been useful to you. And yeah, thanks for watching.